So recently I found out that this stationary store near my home is closing down. So I stopped by and I did kind of a haul because uh, it's not gonna be possible to do soon. And uh, they specialize in pencils. So I really bought a bunch of pencils and I figured I'd do a quick video, just kind of walking through some of what I bought because uh, this place is going away, but then also just kind of, uh, I think there's some fun stuff in here. So let's hop right into it. Uh, they bagged them up really nicely. Uh, it's really a thoughtful thing to do, so I appreciated that. And uh, the video is probably going to take a little while, so I bought a lot of pencils. And uh, is kind of possibly the last opportunity I'm going to have to do this. This is all stuff that you could find online, but you really, at least I rarely get a chance to play with this range of pencils in person. So this range of any product but pencils in particular, so it's really, uh, was kind of an interesting haul. Uh, so let's kind of just run through it and it'll just be a quick peek into some what's available. And then uh, maybe in subsequent videos, I'll kind of do some testing or do some reviews. This will just be about kind of what was available. This is in no particular order whatsoever. Uh, and uh, they obviously got mixed up in transport. Uh, first up, this is a Kitabashi uh, Vermilion pencil. Uh, as you might have guessed, it is red. I, I really like red pencils. I use them not for like, you know, I don't grade papers or anything like that. But I find that uh, I like to take some quick notes in uh, in red. And then I use, uh, I use it kind of just around kind of like household type stuff or uh, if you're doing any sort of home improvement, I think a red pencil is really great for that. I've never used the uh, Kitabashi Vermilion, but uh, I think this one will be a really fun pickup. I, I did buy one that I use all the time, which is, uh, actually no, I usually use the Musgrave, which I thought uh, was this, but this is something different. This is a General's Color Text, which I haven't used before, but to me, it, it reminded me of the Musgrave, uh, I forgot what it is, the Musgrave something 601. And I've used that one a bunch of times. That's a really nice red pencil. So anyway, I bought this one as well. This is the General's Insoluble Color Text. So this one's probably, I guess, water resistant. Uh, we'll see. Moving on. Uh, I don't know what this one was. This was just kind of there. I grabbed it. It was maybe 40 cents or something like that. This is a Moon Products made in the USA. Uh, I believe it's a Futura or Futura. These ones had, uh, a lot of them had defects, so I wasn't quite sure if it's a great pencil or not, but it seemed like a fun pickup, kind of a standard looking graphite in this fun uh, color. I don't know if it's pink or salmon or what, but it looked like a good color. And uh, it has a sort of uh, hexagonal shape, but very rounded. I thought that was very cool and interesting. So again, very low risk here. Let's see if we can get the focus. It's very low risk, which a lot of these pencils were costing uh, some were a little bit more expensive, like the Karan Dash, but everything else was, uh, you know, like a dollar. Probably even less a lot of times. This is the uh, Nataraj Ruby. So this is an Indian company, and I've used their pens before. Their pens are quite good. They have very, uh, very good, very affordable uh, pens. So I figured I would try their pencils. I've been hearing more and more about how good Indian pencils are. Uh, these are pencils made in India, usually sold for the Indian market. This one's made in India. And uh, yeah, I was really excited to pick up some of these. It's They're not that easy to find. Uh, you know, sometimes you could find them at specialty retailers. Sometimes you could find them randomly at Walmart. But uh, yeah, we don't have a great offering, a great selection of Indian made pencils in the US. So this was a good pickup. And then actually this box right here was the from the same brand. And this was the Stripes as opposed to the Ruby. And this box came with an eraser and then a sharpener, very cool. And then these pencils, I think it was 12 of them. And this is the Stripes. So cool pencil, no eraser. And it is, it's not a color, it's, yeah, it's not a colored pencil. It's just a, it looks like a, just a thick lead or thick graphite pencil. So I'm excited to give this one a test.
and I have a bunch of them. It was only sold in the box. Next up, this is that General's Insoluble Color, color, color Text like before, but instead of being red, it's uh, blue. And blue pencils like this were used for photography. Uh, I think when you were marking up a photo, this this like, uh, or you're marking up something and you took a photo of it, this blue, uh, it was basically, it wouldn't really be visible. And I don't know all the details. I don't know about like old school photography and things like that, but that's my general understanding. So you see a lot of older pencils. Uh, I mean, this isn't a vintage pencil, but this is a, inspired by kind of a vintage requirement. So you see a lot of uh, vintage pencils with this uh, in this like lighter blue color. Uh, next up, this this one, this was a, a uh, Viarco, Vlarco, I don't know what that is. Uh, looks kind of like a one, but I'm guessing it's an I. Uh, I think this is a Portuguese brand and this is a uh, oval shaped. So an elliptical carpenter's pencil, very fun pickup. And I don't use a lot of carpenter's pencils. I tend to use, you know, for that sort of work, I use the, that red Musgrave 601, but uh, I don't know, it's looked fun too. And uh, I've never used an elliptical pencil, so it seemed like a good pickup. Moving along, this is a Tombow 8900. It's kind of a more standard general writing uh, F. So uh, general, you know, like kind of the equivalent of an HB just a, a good general pencil. And these you could find, but I don't have any yet. I have a few Tombow pencils, but no 1800s. So I picked this one up. And then I went a little crazy on the Karan Daash pencils, just because, uh, I don't know, I really like what that brand does. They seem to make really nice stuff. I've, very rarely am I disappointed with a Karan Daash product. So I pick up a bunch of them and some were a little bit more expensive. Actually, the most expensive item in the entire purchase I bought was one of these Karandash pencils, which was, I think, $3 or uh, it was this one right here. This was the uh, Karandash Swiss made uh, graph wood. So I think this one was $3 or maybe possibly $4. Everything else was much cheaper than that. So I kind of blew it out on this one. And I think this is fairly similar to uh, this pencil, which I've had for a while. This is a Karandash Swiss wood. Uh, I believe this one is fairly similar, but it's I could tell it's lighter. It doesn't have a dipped tip here. Uh, so it's probably made of a lighter wood. I think this might be like a beech wood or something instead of whatever the other one is. Anyway, so that's the graph wood. Very, very nice. Really, I don't know. It just, it just looks like a really beautiful pencil. So we'll see how that goes. In the rest of the Karandash lineup, I bought uh, this one. This is kind of their 351. I think this is just a standard student pencil. This was in a, this was a normal price, you know, less than a dollar. So uh, we'll see. Usually when you see Karandash products in the US, you see their sort of higher end stuff. You don't see that just their day-to-day -day stuff that would be sold more in uh, Europe or possibly in uh, in Switzerland where they're where they're made. Uh, so, sorry, this was the Karandash, the three five one. I think this was the student pencil. This is the Karandash seven seven seven, the Technograph. Again, now we see kind of a no eraser. Nice line here. I, I don't know the details on this one. Seems like a fun pickup. Then we have, this is the uh, Natura, the 374. Again, uh, no eraser. I think this one was made out of recycled wood or something like that. This was kind of like the, uh, maybe not recycled wood, but this was like the uh, more the natural product. Then the uh, Edelweiss, which I don't know the details of. I mean, clearly it has the picture of the Edelweiss, which is like the kind of the mountain top flower. And, uh, just look like a cool pencil. I like the blue. This one was available, I think, in a few different colors. This blue seemed really classy, so I picked it up. Uh, these ones, uh, also the Edelweiss, but uncoated. And uh, these ones were, they seemed really affordable. I think they were a dollar each, so I picked up three. It just seemed like a really nice, natural-looking pencil. I like how they feel. They have more grip, and they're, they're uncoated, so unvarnished, and they just feel really as close to being like an untreated 
piece of wood as I've ever felt in a pencil. Okay, what else do we have? We have, this is an Apsara Absolute Extra Strong Extra Dark. This is another Indian made pencil. And I've heard pretty good things about this brand, but it's not something I have a lot of familiarity with. Uh, so I picked this one up, just looked like a nice art pencil, I'm guessing. Here is another Nataraj, or again, however you say that, another made in India, which was a good sign for me. Uh, it's very affordable. This one has a kind of a marble design, which I actually really don't like uh, aesthetically, but I'm excited to test this one out. And then <laughs> this thing was uh, hilarious. I don't know how I could not buy this. This is the Karandash Swiss made carpenter's pencil. And you can see there's a example of a hand plane here, uh, medium, which I think is medium darkness. It's not elliptical. I mean, it's like almost elliptical, but it has these flat ends. And then if you look at it next to kind of a standard pencil, you'll see like clearly it is, it's extra long. And I don't really know the purpose for that. Like I get that a carpenter's pencil is not round, so it doesn't roll, that makes perfect sense for me. I don't know why a carpenter would want an extra long pencil. Maybe when you're hand sharpening it, uh, you know, you can't put this thing in a sharpener because it's not, uh, it's not round and it's too wide. So maybe when you're hand sharpening it, you kind of whittle away more inevitably. So uh, they have an extra long pencil. I'm not really sure, but I, uh, <laughs> I thought it was pretty amusing, so I picked it up. Then I randomly bought this thing. It is kind of like, oh, it's not kind of like, it is a highlighter, but it had this sort of uh, eco-friendly body. It actually looks like it's made out of a cardboard or a paper, but it's not. I think it's just some sort of natural plastic or, you know, recycled plastic. And you can see, yeah, 90% of the cap and barrel are made from recycled materials made in Germany. I don't know. I don't really use highlighters too much, but I figured I'd give this one a shot. Helpful to have a highlighter around time to time. And I really like the shape of this one. It's really nicely carved out. It's very cool looking. And then lastly, this is a Karandash phthalate free gum eraser. That's the store CW pencil, three bucks. So a little bit on the expensive side, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, you know, why not buy an eraser if you're buying a whole bunch of pencils, <laughs> almost all of which are lacking erasers at the end. I have a few erasers, but always nice to have another one and I've never used this one before, so. Anyway, that is the Monster Pencil Hall to, uh, I guess, commemorate, commemorate, the, uh, commemorate the closing of that store, which is uh, too bad, but I'm stacked on pencils now. So thanks for watching.